These days, it can seem like scientists and researchers are making mind-blowing discoveries each and every minute. From the outer reaches of space to our long-forgotten past, we are only starting to scratch the surface of what we can potentially uncover. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be taking a look at these recent discoveries. Melting glaciers reveal undiscovered island near Antarctica Antarctica is not a place that generally comes to mind when thinking of discovering new landscapes. But the truth is that the large glacial ice sheets actually effectively conceal the more permanent landmasses that lie unseen below. As the glaciers melt and the floating shelf of ice dissipates, researchers going on expeditions through the Antarctic are able to discover new landforms and islands that have been previously hidden below the ice. This was the case with Sif Island, which was uncovered as the Thwaites Glacier, which is known as the Doomsday Glacier because it is one of the fastest retreating Antarctic glaciers melted and revealed underlying rock. Now the newly uncovered landmass rises above sea level and is made of granite, although it is covered almost entirely by the remnants of the ice shelf layer. Sif Island, named for a Norse goddess of the Earth, was discovered on February 26, 2020 by researchers with the International Thwaites Glacier Offshore Research Project. When four researchers were moving through the Antarctic waters near Pine Island Glacier, they noticed rock showing through the ice and were able to land and confirm that the formation was indeed an island. The rocky outcropping makes for a small island consisting only of 350 meters of volcanic granite, covered almost entirely by a retreating ice shelf and a few seals. The researchers who discovered and are studying the island originally believed that the ice covering the island was from an iceberg that had lodged itself on the rocks and finally melted enough that the granite itself could be seen. But further study led them to hypothesize that the ice was actually once a part of the Pine Island Glacier ice shelf, which is a field of floating ice that covers part of the ocean where it extends from the edge of the glacier. The Pine Island Glacier and the Thwaites Glacier, whose retreating form revealed Sif Island, are the two largest glaciers on the Antarctic Peninsula, and are at the centre of one of the fastest warming areas of the planet. The massive bodies of ice are melting and shrinking at a rate faster than new ice can form, greatly diminishing the coastline of the continent and allowing underlying granite islands such as Sif Island to be uncovered. Sif Island is the only rock formation of its kind for 65 kilometers in any direction. Although with the increasingly prevalent glacial melts caused as a direct result of global warming, more of its kind are sure to emerge. Once the island was located, researchers used archived satellite images to track the emergence of the rock from the ice and predict the topographical changes that can be expected with the continuing warming temperatures. Study of Sif Island will also help researchers to study in real time the process of glacial rebound, where a continent underneath a melting glacier rises higher than it was as a result of decreased pressure on the rocks, essentially rebounding from the ice. It is unclear whether this rebound causes further cracking and shrinking of the ice shelf, so scientists are closely monitoring the progress of emerging Sif Island. Although the island will no doubt become an important resource for scientists studying climate change, the fact that it emerged at all is deeply concerning as it speaks to the depth that global warming has impacted Antarctica. Shigir Idol Older Than Experts Thought The Shigir Idol, considered by historians and archaeologists as the world's oldest wooden sculpture, is shaped in the form of a human with an eerie-looking face. It is currently on display at the Sverdlovsk Regional Museum of Local Law in Russia. Researchers have now determined that it may date back even further than they originally estimated. The idol was discovered in 1890 in the Ural Mountains of Russia. It is named after the Shigir peat bog in which it was found. In 2018, scientists believed that it had been carved roughly 11,500 years ago. However, those same researchers recently concluded that it had been created 12,100 years prior, a full 600 years earlier than the initial estimate. To understand how old that is, consider when other ancient relics were constructed. 
Stonehenge dates to around 5,000 years ago, while the Great Pyramids of Giza were over 4,500 years ago. At 12,000 years old, this wooden idol would have existed during the Quaternary Extinction, which occurred around 10,000 years ago, and saw the disappearance of Ice Age megafauna and large woolly mammals. This is not some tiny wooden object either. It stands at about 5.3 meters tall and features human faces and geometric patterns. According to researchers at the State Agency of Heritage Service in Germany, this new estimated age makes it the world's earliest wooden monumental sculpture. The research team spent some time reanalyzing the average radiocarbon dates that they had published in 2018. At that time, the age range was from 12,500 to 8,600 years ago, giving them an average of 11,500 years old. However, wax and wood pigment were used on the idol to maintain its condition and repair any damage. They found that wax reconstruction began nearly 120 years ago, and the stain in the 1990s. The scientists believe that these treatments would have influenced the results to appear younger, as radiocarbon dating calculates the ratio of decaying radioactive carbon isotropes. Instead, the researchers decided to sample the wood's innermost parts from the reconstructed surface since the treatments did not alter them. With that, they concluded the wood dated to 12,250 years ago. However, they are also aware that the wood came from the heart of a tree which would have died long before it was cut down and used for construction. Although the organic wood material died 12,250 years ago, they estimate that it was felled roughly 150 years later. Historians also analysed the idol's design, linking it to other artefacts with geometric motifs that have been discovered to date about 12,100 years ago as well. We commonly see simple lines and zigzags as decoration during the late Paleolithic and early Mesolithic eras. The sculpture gives us another small insight into what our early ancestors were doing and where they were migrating to. The Cryptogram of Olivier Lavasseur Olivier Lavasseur, otherwise known as La Bouse, was well known for his swift and ruthless capturing of his enemies but his buzzard-like methods of raiding wasn't his only claim to fame. It is said that Lavasseur hid the largest pirate treasures ever known, estimated at over one billion pounds, and perhaps his biggest legacy is the cryptogram he left behind to find it. Born into a wealthy French family in the late 1600s, Lavasseur's life was already set up for success. He was fortunate enough to procure an excellent education before landing as a naval officer. In fact, during the War of Spanish Succession, King Louis XIV granted him a letter of mark. A letter of mark allowed private vessels to attack and capture enemy vessels during wartime. After the war had ended, Levasseur and his ship were ordered to return home. He had other plans, however. He had become much too accustomed to his lifestyle at sea and decided to join up with the Benjamin Hornigold Pirate Company. And after some time with Hornigold and a brief partnership with Black Sam Bellamy, Levasseur wanted to go at it on his own. He spent most of his pirate career along the West African coast. After 1720, he launched primarily from the island of Saint Maria, which is located just off Madagascar. Levasseur and his crew, which by this time consisted of over 750 men and three ships, later took place in arguably one of the most famous pirate raids the capture of Portuguese ship Nossa Senhora de la Cabo, or Our Lady of the Cape. This particular ship was loaded with treasure and gold as it belonged to the Patriarch of the East Indies and the Viceroy of Portugal. The pirates easily took the ship which was anchored for repairs following a storm. Aboard the ship were many bars of gold and silver as well as boxes of golden guineas. There were diamonds and pearls, silks, art, and religious items brought from the Sakatharel in Goa. The biggest piece of treasure was the Flaming Cross of Goa. The cross was made of pure gold and adorned with gemstones. It was so heavy that it took three men to move it to Lavasseur's ship. The treasure from this particular raid was so big, the pirates didn't even rob the people aboard, even though they usually would have done so. This particular raid would go on to inspire Robert Louis Stevenson while writing Treasure Island.
In 1724, when amnesty was being offered to all pirates who would renounce their lifestyle, Levasseur refused. The French government demanded their stolen treasure back, and he was not willing to hand it over. Instead, he settled in Seychelles and tried to stay hidden. Eventually, he was captured and hanged for piracy in 1730. Now, just where was all of that treasure that Levasseur had been hoarding? The tale states that as he stood upon the scaffolding, waiting for his sentence to be carried out, he exclaimed, Find my treasure, the one who may understand it, before tossing a necklace containing a 17-line cryptogram into the spectators. Two treasure hunters, Reginald Herbert Cruz Wilkins and his son John, have now devoted their lives to decoding the cipher and finding the treasure. Reginald had spent 27 years hunting Levasseur's treasure. Only his death in 1977 stopped his quest. Now John continues his father's hunt. Though some people doubt the validity of the cipher, the British Museum has tested the document and proven it to be parchment from the 18th century. Although the cipher seems like nonsense to some untrained, it is widely known that Lavasseur was well educated. According to John, his father spent years decoding the cryptogram. He believed that the code broke down to a riddle inspired by the twelve labours of Hercules, that is, the twelve tasks Hercules was to perform to return home according to Greek mythology. John now believes Levasseur's treasure is somewhere on the Seychelles island of Mahe. Although, in his own words, John is sure he has found the location, remaining vague as to not draw attention to his site, he has been shut down for digging since 2009. The local government requires a 250,000 rupee fee for him to continue his digging. Will John find Levasseur's bounty? He is determined to do so. He will need to be mindful, however. According to John, his research suggests there may be a final booby trap he will need to outsmart before he gets his hands on all of that treasure. Photos reveal giant Easter Island Maui statues are covered in mysterious symbols. One of the most interesting things about Easter Island is the Maui statues. The country is most famous for these unusual statues that were said to be created by the Rapa Nui people. They were made from volcanic rock and resemble human faces. Most also have bodies that were sculpted but the bodies were underground and therefore not visible until excavated. A recent discovery in 2012 unearthed a mysterious revelation related to the Maui statues. The bodies attached to the large heads of the statues have distinctive symbols and designs which were originally thought to be tattoos. The depictions were only discovered upon withdrawing the statues and discovering them on the back of the statues' bodies. Experts were confused as to why the bodies were decorated when they were kept underground for no one to see. Were they buried underground on purpose or did they slowly sink over time? This led to other questions regarding the Maui statues and their varying features. Some face the sea whilst others face inland. Some have heavy red stone hats and others don't. How were they able to move such heavy stones around the island without modern day machinery? Researchers continue to investigate and seek answers to these questions but some just don't add up. Looking back to the strange markings on the bodies of the statues, it still remains unclear as to what they mean. Some designs depicted crescent shapes which are believed to represent canoes, but no one can be too sure. Academics have suggested that the figures could represent ancestors of figures that were high up in the tribe. Another theory suggests that the stones were dug up from quarries on the island, decorated at the quarry site and then walked over to the different spots throughout the island. They are believed to be set up around the island to act as guardians that would protect the inhabitants from any danger. After further investigation and looking at other reasons behind the markings, it could have something to do with past farming methods. People believe that the statues could have been sculpted when digging deep within the quarry in order to find the most fertile soil. The statues themselves may have been kept as a symbol of food production, but there are no definitive answers. Could the writing be linked to this hypothesis? Although we may not ever know what the markings on the statues are, how they got there and why the statues were placed in certain ways, experts are continuously working to uncover an explanation.
Do you think we'll ever find out in this lifetime? It's difficult to say, but with the rapid scientific evolution we've seen in recent years, we may not be too far off from finding out. The Great Pyramid of Kalula Despite many claiming that the ancient pyramids of Giza are the largest structures created by an ancient civilization, the truth is, that is hardly the case. Located in Mexico and built by the ancient Aztec civilization is a pyramid so massive that many living on the structure believed it to be nothing more than a naturally made mountain. Known as the Great Pyramid of Kalula, one of the largest structures created in the Americas along with being a massive Aztec temple that rivals every other in creation, the structure has a base four times larger than that of the Giza pyramids and almost twice the total volume. The pyramid is located in the city of Puebla, Mexico, and is known as the world's largest pyramid in construction. Researchers believe that the pyramid was constructed back in 300 BC, though many accounts believe it to be far older, in honor of their ancient god known as Quetzalcoatl. For 1,000 years, the pyramid was used as a place of worship before being abandoned by the population for a reason not totally known by researchers today. Considering the site was abandoned and no maintenance was provided, this left the humidity of the air and the never-ending downpour of rain to reclaim the mud and adobe brick used in its construction back into the formation of soil to be used for new tropical greenery. This led to the pyramid's mountain appearance, though it continues to hold undisturbed layers beneath that of the layers of mud and brick on the surface. Today, excavations on the site cannot be accomplished due to an old Spanish church of Christianity built atop the structure that locals refused to allow to be demolished to study the structure underneath, leaving it as one of the biggest mysteries of the ancient Aztec civilization. But what do you make of these recent discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below, and please help us grow this community by liking and subscribing to our channel. Thank you for watching.